you are asking me an interesting question yeah. if so, I've been Maxi, to a polling you, station. Yeah. Maxi, have you been to a polling station where they're telling votes? No, not telling. Just uh -huh. I went to vote. You went to vote? Just, I, I, beyond that, <laughs> I, I, I disassociate myself <laughs> significantly. <laughs> and you let the institutions that be do their part, right? The, yeah. So usually... The, uh, where they tally votes is usually so packed, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, aspirants, with supporters, mm. because you never know. Yeah. I think some aspirants maybe uh, prefer to stay at home mm. and wait wait for the announcement mm. from home. Mm. So for me, because the stakes were so high, I mm. decided to go to the uh, to the center. In the evening now. Yes, in mm. the evening now. Mm. I decided to go to the center. And let me tell you, it's usually so packed because you can imagine you have uh, supporters of uh, MCAs, MPs, like mm. supporters for candidates across all the positions yes, that are on the positions. ballot yeah. are there. Mm. You know, the agents are there, yeah. Yeah. the observers are there, mm. you know. So, literally, like it was a very, uh, it, was a, it was a warm evening, like mm. people were even like sweating. Mm. But for me, I was freezing. And I think mm. it's because I was freezing from within mm. because I was so scared if the outcome won't favor me, mm -hmm. you know, because I was looking at uh, all I had to race against, you mm -hmm. know, I was looking at my experiences, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, electro violence, mm -hmm. right? I was looking at uh, people who uh, were looking down on my candidature because of uh, age, because of uh, my marital uh, status, or, you know, people who are complaining or people who are thinking, I've just come here because I want to be nominated or because I want to, you know, try again next time. So mm. this is just like a good ground for mm. me to gain visibility. Mm. And, uh, you know, people are not serious about trying to understand my manifesto. Mm. So all those thoughts are actually running in my mind mm. while I'm waiting to hear what the results are. And I tell you, when the results were announced, it didn't matter that I came in fourth and people were congratulating me. They're just like, Bina, there were 12 candidates. 12 candidates. This young girl was top five. They're like, mm. Bina, mm. you know. And for me, it didn't matter because in a system like ours where it's the winner takes it all, mm. it doesn't even matter when you're number two. How many people even remember? Who was the runners up in any election how many people remember mm. uh, you know unless it's like a presidential candidate mm. how many people remember mm. right so i remember going at home so broken and let me tell you i already told you i was 49 kgs mm. you know like i was so slender mm. and i would wake up cry throughout go back to sleep because i was reflecting and thinking all those people I spoke to, I tried to sell my, uh, you know, my agenda to. All those people kept on, kept on saying, we are supporting you, we are with you, we are going to vote for you. You know, I kept on reflecting on that. And you kind of feel like you're, you've been betrayed. You know, you kind of feel like you really poured out everything you had. Mm. You know, mm. your soul, your mind, your ideas, you know. And uh, you kind of feel like people didn't identify with you, perhaps, mm. you know. People didn't see you, people didn't understand you, you know. And um, it affects your self-esteem. Mm. It affects your confidence. And you need all those, mm. you know, in mm. whatever thing that you're, you know, pursuing. Mm. And then that's how I fell into depression. Mm. Because then now I was just remembering again what it took for me to raise resources to go back to school. And I have to do that again. And even ask people who told me, been at this thing you won't even win you're joking do you know any 22 or 23 year old who's an mca like who's won an election fair and square how do i approach those people again to them to support me well they kept on you know dissuading me from pursuing my political ambition mm -hmm. like how am i going to even speak to family members who dissuaded me and told me you're not serious why would you even run for office who do you think you are you mm -hmm. know how am i going to speak to those people how am i going to go back to the church that prayed for me, you know, to actually uh, win this election. How am I gonna, going to face people? Hmm. You know, how? How do I even live with myself? You know, like every other morning when, you know, I had these thoughts that I had to shut out, you know, thoughts of, this is not your time, you won't make it. I had, and I had to fight all those thoughts every other day. Even when I felt like giving up, 
I tell myself, Bina, you can't give up. Even when opportunities to give up, even when I was pushed by the system, by the people to give up and I didn't give up, then how am I going to look at myself in the mirror and pat myself in the back? How am I going to do that? Because we often don't celebrate people who've not won. Mm. You know, people celebrate winners, even political parties. You know, after an election, they call people who've won, mm. literally, you know. Mm. They don't even, maybe even call their supporters, you know, and even very few politicians even call their supporters. Like at a personal level now, mm. at the community level, very few politicians mm. even gather their supporters to say, thank, thank you, you. Mm. for supporting my campaign. Mm. Thank you. I got this number of votes because of you. Because you see, even if you're number two and you got 20,000 votes, it's because someone did door to door for you. Mm. It's because someone helped you spread the word. You know, mm. It's because someone believed in you enough for you to get those votes, you know. But the majority of us don't even go back to say thank you, you know. And how am I going to also face people, you know, and still encourage them and tell them, you know what, we didn't make it this time, but we'll make it next time. Do I even want to participate in the next time? Mm. So contending with mm. all of that, mm. that is, you know, you slowly don't realize you're falling into depression. Mm. You slowly don't realize it's impacting your health. You're not eating completely, you know. Like you wake up, take water. You know, I like porridge a lot. Mm. And I like this, uh, uh, you know, like uh, this uh, matawiza malenge. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the pumpkin leaves. Yeah. I like mm. them a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, like that is something I would just try to nibble mm. a little. Mm. But then that's it, you know. So my parents, of course, were very concerned, you know. And then uh, friends, you know, people haven't been calling you for such a long time, mm. you know. And then, you know, even the way you hear politicians talk about once you lose, your phone doesn't ring. Mm. No one calls you. No one calls in to check up on you, you know, like literally. So one time um, I'm speaking to Pastor Gowi and, uh, you know, we always had this conversation. Even when I was running for office, I told him I'm running for office mm -hmm. and he's one of the uh, people who really encouraged me mm -hmm. to run for political mm -hmm. office and uh, also who tried to ensure I have clarity, mm -hmm. you know, together with uh, Pastor Obuanda, mm -hmm. you know, um, they are and still were my spiritual mentors at the time. Mm. So they encouraged me to have clarity, you know, in terms of Bina, why are you running for political office? And I remember even when they were breaking down um, scriptures, like I think should be first Samuel, uh, either 23 or 22, mm -hmm. where it speaks about, and um, <coughs> when David was in Ziklag, mm a crowd went to him mm -hmm. while he was in Ziklag mm. and they were discontented, they were poor and they had lost hope in life mm. and he became their leader, right? And I remember even uh, um, Pastor Banda asking me, this is the crowd you want to lead. People don't have hope. People don't have hope. People are so discouraged with this life, Bina, literally, by the way every other day people are living in debt because the scriptures also say that even those who are in like those who are in debt you know uh and those who had lost hope you know and those who were discontented went to david in ziklag and he became their leader mm -hmm. you know and it's like this is the crowd you want to lead are you ready are you ready to lead this crowd you're not going to lead a crowd that is actually wealthy Oh, they're cheering you on. Oh, they're there sending you positive vibes. Like people are even waiting for you to give them hope, you know. And I had reflected over these scriptures mm. over time, you mm. know. I had reflected over, you know, people I admire, mm. like Daniel in the Bible. People I admire, like Joseph in the Bible, who had provided vision for Egypt when they were struggling with mm. hunger. Mm. Who had provided vision that was able to curb food security issues in Egypt. You know, like this guy had sat down and when the king had received a vision, I mean a dream, and he didn't have peace, and Joseph was called from the prison to interpret that dream. And he said, we're going to have seven years of plenty mm. and we're going to have seven years of drought. Mm. We need to gather a lot mm. within the seven years of plenty enough to take care of us for the seven years of scarcity you can imagine and he was tasked with putting down the strategy for that for curbing food food uh, insecurity mm. in egypt mm. to an extent that when drought came to egypt 
I mean, when, when Roch came to Egypt and uh, globally, mm. guys were traveling all the way to Egypt, Egypt. for food mm. because of someone's vision, mm. you know. And, you know, my spiritual mentors have ensured that, and of course, with time, I have more spiritual mentors mm. and just more mentors mm. for different areas of my life. Mm -hmm. They've ensured that I really I am clear about what I want mm. and why I am and doing why. it. Be clear you know? on the why. Mm. Yeah, like my why, mm. you know. Mm. And they'd ask me all these questions and they tell me, what is motivating you? Mm. You know, it is, these, things, these things are not easy. Mm. Strategy is not easy, mm. you know. Coming up with a strategy that is going to sort out people in your ward, mm. it's not easy, mm. you know. So I had reflected over all these conversations, you can imagine. Mm. So you can, you can imagine, I have reflected over all these conversations. I have prayed over, over all this. Um, I have journeyed with people. I have poured myself out in every way that I can think about. Mm. And then you don't win. Mm. So for me, uh, that is why I was even now struggling to even go back to church, you know. And uh, that morning when uh, Pastor Gobi called me, uh, he was like, we need to have a meeting, you know. We just need to sit down and look at what you wanted to achieve, you know. And uh, is politics the only way you would have achieved that? Mm. And I think for me, that was like a light bulb moment, mm. you know, because he was like, let's put down your plans. What do you want to achieve for the people uh, in Kayole? I started actually outlining all the challenges I was, you know, um, mm. I was uh, yeah. saying here before, mm. you know, that actually motivated me to mm. run for office. Mm. And he said, okay, do you think the only way to achieve this is if you become a politician? Mm. I said, no. And that is how Badili Africa was born. Mm. I realized that the most important office in this country is not the office of the president, the office of the deputy president, senator, governor, MP, women rep, MCA, the most important office in this country is the office of the citizen. Mm. And we must take charge mm. of our offices as citizens. Mm. We must understand how to fight for our rights. Mm. We must understand Article 43 of the Constitution because it outlines our economic and social rights. You know, your right to good health, good education, you know, all those things that are articulated there. And it's really interesting that majority of us don't even know Article 43, by the way. Mm. We don't even know what yeah. we even have to fight for. Mm. You know, you must understand what you're fighting for so that you can actually fight effectively mm. or negotiate uh, effectively, mm. you know. And that is the day I realized, actually, if we begin working with citizens to understand their rights and fight for those rights, we'll still achieve the same goal when it comes to access to uh, better public service delivery mm. in this country. Yeah. Because I was running for office because of the pain I used to see when citizens going through because they can't access better public uh, services, goods, yeah. you know, mm. and services, mm. right? And I'm like, we can still do this. And then my challenge with uh, young women who are not engaging effectively in political spaces, I said, I actually have an opportunity to engage young women because data in this country um, shows that the most disillusioned, disenfranchised, and disengaged lot, it's young women between the age of 18 and 25. Can you imagine? Mm. When it comes to political participation, mm. the most disillusioned, disengaged, and disenfranchised lot mm. is young women between the age of 18 and 25. Mm. And I began uh, figuring out how then do we engage this lot, mm. you know? And uh, that is why even at Badili Africa, we came up with strategies like using fashion and beauty mm. to talk about politics and governance, mm. you see. Mm. Uh, how do you make someone interested mm. in what you're talking about? Mm. And how do you avoid talking to converts? Mm. You know, people who think like you, look at things like you, yeah. you know? And when we began using fashion and beauty, we started seeing young women uh, beginning to come to our sessions mm. and they're comfortable because they're interested in this aspect of their life, mm. you know, because I was um, uh, joking earlier with uh, uh, Honorable Waithira and I was telling her, mm -hmm. At 20, you're not thinking about gender inclusion and equity and equality. At 20, you're thinking about class. If you're in college, you're thinking about partying. Mm. You're thinking about this party you're not invited to. You're thinking about this cat dude who's not noticing you or this cat chick who's not noticing you. You're not thinking about equality issues, you know, about in political inclusion issues. But then how do you get that particular person who's 20 to think about how politics is affecting them? Yeah. How is your hair political? Mm. You know, 
how is sex a political issue? How is mm. abortion a political issue in this mm. country? You mm. know, how is family planning mm. a political issue mm. in this country? Mm. Because all these things affect us, you mm. know. Mm. Cost of living, mm. how is that a political issue? You're, mm. you're, you're not accessing education, how is it a political issue? And uh, that is now the work we began doing at mm. Badili Africa. When you say began, did you sit down, did you register, did, what did you have to do for it to become mm. like an organization? So, um, so we began putting, uh, so we began after, after the conversation now with, with uh, Pastor Gowie, uh, with, uh, Pastor Gowie mm. and uh, uh, realizing we can do all these things, mm. right? Sat down with a team mm -hmm. and uh, I also began reflecting mm -hmm. with uh, Gina Mutune, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, she's been mm. so integral mm. in terms of uh, my ability to articulate my ideas, mm. you know. And uh, I remember the day I met uh, Gina Mutune. Mm. It was when uh, her film was touring, mm. Leo. Mm. And uh, I just told her, I just want you to mentor me. Mm. You know, um, I just want you to mentor me. And uh, thank God she created time for me. I tell young people again, you know, I can, there's so many things I, I, I keep on telling people that fine mentors also have time for you. Mm. Because sometimes you want to run to celebrities. And... If someone doesn't have time for you, whether they're, mm. they're a celebrity or not, mm. surely how are they going to journey with you? Mm. Find people who have time for you mm. and they don't have to be quote unquote celebrities. Yeah. You know, what are your interests? What do you want to nurture? Mm. You know, in which direction do you want to grow in? You mm. know, find people who speak to your that journey you where mm. you're at mm. and then even you be a good student. Mm. Be a good student in terms of uh, how you're soaking in information, mm. keeping time mm. and honoring people who journey with you, mm. you know. Mm. So I poured out my heart and mm. I told her, I'm very passionate about, you know, how women participate in elections. Mm. And uh, uh, she began journeying with me, you know, uh, in terms of putting structures in place, mm. um, you know, little by little how do you put concepts in place mm. you know how do you articulate your ideas on paper mm. you know and then how do you knock doors because mm. th that's another thing like sometimes you're so passionate but then you don't even know where to start from when you're knocking doors which mm. door do i knock and mm. how do i present myself you mm. know and i'm really 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 uh, honored that she could also find mm. time to even knock doors with me mm. you know because then that helped even open some of the doors that uh that have supported uh our work mm. um uh, till today, mm. you know, mm. so from my experiences running for political office, mm. I saw how grassroots women organizing in Chamas, mm. you know, would always mobilize for politicians. Mm. And then once the politicians occupy uh, office, mm. they don't see them as stakeholders to engage when it comes to local development at the community level, but then just seeing them as beneficiaries and mm. not stakeholders. Mm. And that concerned me, mm. you know. Um, I saw how young women, you know, would not actually engage in political rallies, would mm. not engage online to debate about a political issue, would mm. not even show up, mm. you know. And um, that uh, informed uh, our strategies that we use today in terms of how we engage young women to, to ensure that they actually participate effectively mm. in uh, uh, elections, mm. participate effectively in uh, political processes at the community level, whether mm. it's the budget processes, mm. uh, and also digital literacy, mm. you know, how do they take advantage and leverage mm. the digital platforms they belong in mm. to actually ensure that their voices are heard, you know? So you yeah. do a lot of empowering of women to participate, to, uh, to, to get into public participation. How do you also remove the barriers? Like, was that part of the mandate that you were thinking through? Um, that empowerment is very important. How do you remove the barriers to participation? So, um, number one, knowledge is power. Mm. You know, in terms of uh, um, you understanding your rights mm. and you understanding how to claim those rights mm. and you understanding how self-identity uh, mm. issues also impact your ability mm. to show up absolutely and then uh number two understanding even how barriers like gender-based viol mm. violence mm. are a key deterrent mm. to women showing up mm. effectively mm. in political processes mm. and holding institutions accountable mm. uh when it comes to curbing gender-based violence mm. you know whether it is uh uh 
the national police mm. whether it's uh, the you know the dpp's office mm. uh, you know the director of public prosecutions uh, mm. office mm. whether it's uh, civil society mm. and even now us as citizens mm. you know mm. how we view uh, gender based violence yeah. in elections and our role mm. you know in curbing gender based violence mm. you know mm. and um, how then we harmonize all these efforts mm. to ensure that we level the playing ground mm. to anyone mm. who wants to pursue their political ambition, yeah. right? Yeah. So in terms of uh, sensitization, mm. capacity building mm. with knowledge and skills mm. uh, for um, young women mm. running for office from the university level, not even mm. just from the community, mm. because even as we talk about two-thirds gender rule and we talk about um, inclusion in national politics, mm women are still left behind when mm. it comes to student government election. Mm -hmm. You know, in our national politics, we are talking about 23% representation mm. of women in national politics. Mm. At the university level, you're talking about 10% mm. representation of young women in mm. student government politics. Mm. So we have to start there mm. because then that is where leaders uh, who are in our national politics right mm. now, majority of the household names we know about, mm. Mm. they began their journey from the student uh, mm. government uh, politics, mm. right? So for us at Badili Africa, we are very keen mm. uh, to ensure that young people, especially young women, understand that they have a role to play mm. uh, when it comes to active participation mm. in politics and governance, whether mm. as candidates, whether as voters, mm. whether as uh, mobilizers, mm. whether uh, when it comes to them taking advantage of their digital platforms mm. to advocate yeah. uh, for issues that they care about, whether mm. it's menstrual uh, health, mm. whether it's climate change, whether it's food security. Mm. How do you show up, you know, in yeah. a space where you're likely to be trolled today mm. in a space where you're likely to be bullied out of those social media platforms. Mm. But then how do you still show up and show up for other people as well and mm. support other people as mm. well and hold uh, space for other people? Yeah. Same thing to um, our um, Chama women. Mm. We are very keen in terms of how do you hold these leaders accountable? And I think a, a, a critical question I have around that is now as an organization, what did it take to, for you to actually set it up? They are struck, besides the strategy and besides what you want to do in the community, there is still the organization. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it needs to be bankable, needs to have structures and systems. How has that journey been like for you three, four years later? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so for Badili, even when we began uh, putting our you know, thoughts together, mm -hmm. I quickly realized that we need to register an mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. So we registered it as a community-based organization, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because also that was uh, um, a little bit easier mm -hmm. for where we are at, mm -hmm. you know, we are young. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how it was registered. And then um, another thing I also realized is uh, it would be important to have advisors mm. who are in the space mm -hmm. and also who can journey with us, mm -hmm. you know, like a, like a board. Mm. So I quickly also looked around mm. and um, I sought out um, a few individuals mm. who I was also looking up to mm. in terms of um, the work they are doing mm. and contributing to mm. in the civil society space, mm. right? Mm. So. I was uh, uh, working with uh, Massing Cather mm -hmm. at uh, International Foundation for Electro System, mm -hmm. and uh, I reached out to her. Mm -hmm. I shared with her the vision I have mm -hmm. for uh, Badili Africa, mm -hmm. and of course, this is um, at the backdrop of uh, the conversation we've had with. Mm -hmm. uh, the convos I had with uh, Gina, mm. like just what I explained in mm -hmm. terms of uh, yeah. how Gina was integral to get to this point. Mm. So I explained the vision to mm. her. Mm. And uh, the same thing, I explained the, the vision um, to Steve Obuogo, he's mm. from uh, SCCA, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Neri Mawako mm. from uh, Siesta Place. Mm. And uh, there's uh, um, Kithaka mm. also, um, a very uh, good friend of mine, mm. uh, Douglas Kithaka, and mm. a few other friends. Mm and explain to them the vision I have mm. for Badili Africa. And uh, they formed my first board, mm. yeah. And mm. you know, interestingly, mm. they are still uh, part of my board. Mm. So they, um, 
they're serving their second term because mm. uh, it was uh, first three years. Now mm. they're like serving their second okay. term for three years. Mm. Uh, so you can only serve for two mm. years as a mm. board member currently at uh, Badili Africa. When did you register it officially? So we registered in uh, 2015, yeah. but uh, uh, formally we began in 2018. Our operations, mm. you know, like mm. uh, through the mm. organization now. But, yeah. you know, initially it was just the activities we were doing mm. at the community, but we were mm. not registered mm. then. So, so formal activities began in 2018. Do, do you now then put staff in place? Yes. And start writing proposals? And you know, it's so interesting because uh, right now it's um, a, a fully fledged uh, organization, organization, you know, yeah. and I really thank God that uh, we've even had the visibility that we've had because mm. of also the groups that we represent, which mm. is um, uh, Chama women uh, mm. and how they organize and the fact that uh, they redress so many challenges at the community level, mm. but this does not translate into political voice, mm. you know. Um, and also how they can hold leaders accountable, you know, using their networks, you know, working with uh, younger women and our strategies that use fashion and beauty to target young women who would ideally not attend a political dialogue or a political uh, conversation, mm. you know. So um, just our work uh, in trying to engage marginalized communities mm. and uh, vulnerable groups to engage actively in political processes mm. uh, has attracted uh, donors, mm. you know, like just different uh, uh, donors, mm. uh, big donors in the space, mm. which I thank God for mm. because then um, how I look at it as well, some of the things that I'd, I had wanted to achieve at a ward level, yeah. now we are achieving at a county level, yeah. you know, because yeah. I was so passionate about mm. these things. Mm. When I was running for office, mm. I was like, oh, my community needs mm. this, my community needs this. Mm. But it's, it's so inspiring mm. now seeing those uh, things being achieved at a county level because mm. we're in Nairobi, we're yeah. in Kajiado, we're in Kiambu. So it's mm. so inspiring. Yeah. Uh, getting to see that mm. and um, I really really respect humble beginnings mm. and um, I also um, tell people when you are looking around even you know like uh, for mentors and uh, when you're also looking for help don't undermine anyone you mm. know in this space sometimes really size up people mm. like Maxi mm. you really size up people mm. I'll just give you a very small anecdote mm. right I was in a meeting one time and uh, I sit down next to this lady. So the meeting ends and uh, most of the who's and who's were in that meeting. Mm. So of course, you know, when a meeting ends as young people we want to run to, you know, like uh, the CEOs and imagine they don't even have time. Like the person you should even be running to is a program manager, program officer. Mm. If you really want to work with that organization mm. or maybe seek support from that organization. Mm. So people are running there, taking pictures. So I'm with this lady, we're having tea. So she's like, what do you do, you know? So I tell her what I'm doing because I was just a participant in that meeting. Mm. Uh, I tell her what I'm doing. And uh, she's like, why are you passionate about it? So I tell her, um, I think Chama women do so much at the community level. I can't think of anyone whose mother was not in a Chama and how that Chama impacted their life, whether it's access to food, access to education, access to good health. And I think this needs to translate into political voice. And also talk about um, how we engage young women. Then she says, I think that's innovative, you know. So she introduces herself and she just says, oh, um, I'm a consultant, uh, you know. So she didn't give so much detail about who she really is. She says she's a consultant. So um, we part ways and she says, I love your passion. I really hope, your, you know, your organization grows and your ideas grow. So by then, you know, we were like, uh, I think, one year i was mm. just trying to really tell people about what i'm doing mm. we're even doing it in kayole mm. like we're not even stretched i didn't even have an office mm. zero mm. i didn't have an office i didn't even have a board one time i received an email and uh, it's from uh, the bill and melinda gates foundation mm. and i see the invite that i have been invited to new york to speak Hey, I'm like, now the scammers want to get me, surely. <laughs> the scammers. And they're using this big names. Scam, why are these scammers using big names mm. like this? You know, mm. because I'm just like, why would someone invite me mm. to speak in a session moderated by Melinda Gates? Mm. I'm just a girl from Kayole. No one knows me. Mm. I just ran for office and lost. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. I just have this small organization and I'm even doing my activities at the community, you know? I don't even respond. So as days go by, the you know uh that lady 
I tell you about, I, I told you about, the mm -hmm. consultant mm -hmm. writes to me and uh, um, she says, hey Bina, uh, have the Bill and Melinda Gates team reached out to you? I was in a meeting with, where they were discussing about um, uh, like champions, nee, 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 nee. and I'm like, hmm. what? You know, hmm. let me tell you, I look at the invite. Hmm. You really look at it now. I look with at fresh it eyes. and I look at the guests there. Hmm. I see Obama is going to speak. Hmm. I see Bill is going to speak. Bill Gates is going to speak. Mm. I see the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is going to speak. Mm. And guess what? I mm. speak before the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Mm. I'm just like, I'm just a girl <laughs> from Kayole. Kayole. Mm. Surely, there are guys who have big names mm. out here. Like the guys who have big names out here. So, and I'm saying that to mean and to say that Sometimes we feel like uh, the day I get a bigger platform, I'll do something big. Mm. I'll do something audacious. I'll be serious. I'll be committed. I'll be disciplined. Mm. Your discipline and your character is tested with the little that you have. Mm. That is where your discipline, your consistency, and your character is tested. You know, because before this platform and even the global platforms I've gotten, They've literally come to the community to even listen and hear whether whatever you're saying is actually true, mm. you know, to measure your impact at the community level. Mm. So you can imagine if you are not serious with mm. that one soul, yeah. that classroom of those students, mm. you know, take them seriously. Even if it's 10 students, take them seriously because you don't even know who you're investing in, literally. Because even the mentors who've journeyed with me, they didn't know I would turn out like this. Like I did say, the days I sit down with Dr. Julie, and she's like, Bina, I can't believe when you came to the office, the first time I met you, yeah, you were in slippers in town. Mm. You know, like when she was investing in me, she didn't even think that I'm mentoring this chick tomorrow, she'll turn out to be this way. She mm. was doing what she needed to do mm. or she wanted to do or desired to do at that particular time. Mm. And I think for me, when I look at these experiences, they really shaped how I look at life mm. and how I look at opportunities I have to support someone, to mm. journey with someone, yeah. to be there for someone. Mm. Even right now at Badili Africa, mm. Even the way I look at uh, the people I work with, mm. my colleagues, mm. I'm like, tomorrow this colleague may not be here, mm. but have they learned all they need to learn mm. holistically, mm. not just uh, about what we do, mm. uh, the work that we do, mm. but holistically, mm. like, are they living a wholesome life yeah. beyond Badili Africa? Who are they? I'm keen. Mm. I want to know, mm. you know, because I don't want you tomorrow you're struggling with, I mean, tomorrow you're struggling with depression mm. and yet at work you are so happy, mm. you know. So I'm very concerned about mm. other aspects of even my colleagues' lives because they impact their ability to even deliver effectively, um, you know, at work, at work you know. Yeah. So those ones shaped me a lot. And mm. even the global platforms, you know, I was in the back room that day and I couldn't believe it. And let me tell you even the power of writing mm. down. Mm. Okay, and people underestimate that. Mm -hmm. Do you know the book, like my journal, like my, my journal, a fraction of the people, the global uh, individuals I had put down there, mm. I met them in that Our one present. meeting. Mm. I met them in that one meeting. Mm. Like I was looking, I'm just like, oh my God. You look mm. across, mm. you're seeing Malala. Mm. You look across, you're seeing, uh, you know, like Obama. You mm. look across. Like the guys who are at the back room and mm. I'm just like, dear God, how mm. honored am I mm. to stand in this moment, mm. to reflect, you know, in mm. this moment and mm. who am I? Mm. And I'm just like, I am forever your servant. Mm. I am forever your witness because there's nothing I have done to deserve being here. Mm. People have accolades, people have awards. Mm. You know, and then the imposter syndrome checks in. Mm -hmm. I think they should be the ones who have been here. Mm. There's nothing I have done in my mm. powers to deserve mm. being here. These are presidents. Mm. These are leaders. You know, these are guys who've defied all the odds, you know. You manifested you it know, down, so you, know, you wrote and it I'm down. Like, yeah, yeah, just um, that one thing you're passionate about. Mm. Don't wait for someone to see you for you to do it. Mm. That one thing you're very passionate about. Mm. You know, I tell people that what God has put in you, what God has put in you, I'm at that vision, or rather even the purpose you have. Imagine the quality of someone's life is dependent on, that. on what you're not doing today, mm. on what you're not doing today. Maybe you've been called to invest in the health sector mm. and you're just there, you know, passive 
or maybe you're not even taking it as seriously as you should. Mm. You're not taking your job as seriously as you should. Like someone's quality of life yeah. is dependent on a decision you're making today, mm. whether as a public servant or whether as just uh, any leader, mm. whatever choices you're making today, you're not making that bridge as a leader. And then tomorrow you hear, you know, like there was a, you know, like there was a car and then, uh, you know, that yeah. was swept off by mm. floods. Mm. Just because yeah. you made a decision not or maybe, uh, or maybe mm. you, you are just corrupt, mm. you know. So I am very careful mm. about the decisions I make. Mm. And I hope even anybody I interact with mm. are also as keen and careful. Mm. And they understand that we are living in this moment and we're not going to be here um like uh forever mm. you know there's a day mm. i was kidding myself that mm. i'm young mm. <laughs> i'm like i baby me i'm young mm. me i'm young mm. and you know in my spirit just in my spirit at the moment a message i'd listened to before dropped in my spirit like mm -hmm. bina mm. you're as young as you're as young as when your life will be cut off mm. that if you're 20 and your life will be cut off at 30 you're old because you mm. only have 30 years mm. so you're as young or as old as when your life will be cut off and that alone shapes how I look at things. Mm. I can't say, at the, oh, I am young or I am old. Because if I'm going to die at 90, I hope I'm going to die at 90. Mm. Then I am actually, I actually have time. Mm. But because we don't know when we are going to die, mm. then living intentionally every day becomes mm. crucial. Mm. You know, because you don't know. Because mm. if you're going to die at 40 and you're 35 now, mm. then you're old already mm. because you only have five years. Die yeah. empty. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 You... Continue. So the last four years were largely around con um, building the work that the fantastic work that you are doing with Badili Africa. But then in 2022, there was another election. Did you consider buying? Uh, no, I didn't buy in uh, 2022 because, like, I didn't buy in the national politics. Yeah. Because I was also involved in the Miss President campaign. Tell us about right? that. Right. Yeah. Um, so, Miss President is a leadership um, show, mm. you know, that uh, nurtures the uh, women's leadership capabilities, mm -hmm. right? So, um, it's a show that airs on uh, KTN mm. and uh, it targets everyday woman, whether you're in business, whether you're in politics, whether you're in, uh, you know, civil service, mm. it targets everyone, mm -hmm. you know. And then uh, with the aim that the women who apply to the Miss President show are also women who are very keen uh, on national matters in this country, mm. and they are able to contribute to um, actually the solutions to the biggest challenges we are facing as a country today mm. across all the sectors mm. you know that are impacting us from the cost of living from food security from even just the security of the country itself mm. um entrepreneurship you know just all the areas uh, mm. that impact us um mm. in this particular country so it attracted uh, 750 applicants wow and then uh, it uh, they were cut down to 320 mm -hmm. and then uh, down to 52 mm -hmm. who made it to mm. the academy now mm. to the leadership academy mm. from across kenya yes from across the country mm. and uh, it was intense mm. was it is was there a limit to age no there was no limit to on age. either divide yes uh, either 18 divide. plus yes mm. yeah either divide mm. and it was quite intense mm. but then uh, it uh, opened my eyes to um a lot of uh, you know, like national issues mm -hmm. that are are outside my scope of work. Mm. You know, like my scope of work is uh, heavily At uh, political participation, right. accountability mm. on uh, public service mm. delivery, mm. how young people are engaging, how mm. young women are engaging, mm. how grassroots women are engaging, mm. you know. But then understanding security mm. and terrorism in mm. this country, you mm. know, understanding that if the country is not secure, mm. then nothing else can thrive yeah. everything is dependent on, each on our security mm -hmm. you know in this mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. understanding much as climate change mm -hmm. understanding uh, food security mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. and debating on those issues mm -hmm. you know and uh, also getting to network mm -hmm. with um, leaders mm -hmm. across the country you know was uh, quite important for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for my work and realizing that 
we are different, but we are working towards the same goal because we all want to live a dignified life. Mm. You know, we are working towards um, achieving, um, you know, equality, mm. uh, you know, equity, um, and just a better life and living this country better than we found it mm. when we go, mm. you know. So just being in the same space with people who aspire mm. to impact the leadership of this country positively, mm. right, um, was phenomenal for me, yeah. you know. Of course, it comes with uh, its own uh, challenges mm. in terms of um, how this show is uh, structured. And mm. I think um, th there's, of course, a lot that the organizers um, of the show can improve on when mm -hmm. it comes to how you invest in the mm -hmm. leadership capacities of especially women mm -hmm. who have been left behind in mm -hmm. this country when it comes to representation. Mm -hmm. I think we spoke about the facts. Mm -hmm. So there's so much to improve. So there's mm -hmm. both a uh, positive mm -hmm. uh, and uh, negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... It's also very reliant on um, popularity. Yes. Of vote. So how yes. did that... How? What are, what are his experience uh, doing another campaign? I know, I yeah. know, right? Doing another campaign. Mm. Um, you know, one thing that uh, I always say, one thing I always say campaigning does to you, um, I, I'm, and we discuss the challenges, one thing I always say campaigning does to you is honestly, you really get to understand the issues in this country mm. because let me tell you you talk to everyone and everyone talks to you mm. and also everyone tells you their problem mm. literally everyone tells you their problem mm. it doesn't matter what city you're running for mm. it doesn't matter whether you have a chance to win or not everyone tells you yep. their problem yeah and it was not different this mm. miss president campaign because mm. for me when i was campaigning i decided to focus on my strength, which mm. is uh, I'm a community mobilizer, I'm mm. a community strategist. So I decided, you know what, for me, I'm not, uh, let's say, uh, very active on social media at mm. times, mm. you know, but I'm very active at the community level. So mm. I went to the community mm. and again, I began doing door to door. Mm. And you know, it reminded me when I was doing door to door, mm, ten years ago. when I was running for uh, MCA, MCA. Yeah. and I met this woman and she was like, I'm just mm. asking for food. Mm. I'm like, imagine, I don't have money for food. Honestly, I'm just asking for an opportunity to occupy this office because occupying this office will mean one, two, three. That you have food for... Mm. You know, yeah, mm. will mean even the policies around access to food, food security. I'm able to put those policies or influence those mm. policies, you know. Mm. And sometimes that might feel very distant from the voter. Yes, it mm. does feel so distant from mm. the voter, you know. Because they are now need. They is... want now. Yeah. And you know that day, mm. that woman was telling me that. Mm. At night, she came to my home with her three kids. Mm. And she said, Muheshmiwa, najua liniambia una pesa chakula, but nilijua kwa kwa wezi kosa chakula. So, so nimekuja tu kukula. Mm. You know, that's what I'm saying. Real problems. Mm. Real people, mm. real problems. And mm. that is why sometimes I don't understand how you can actually campaign and interact with problems at that level and decide you actually won't work or you won't deliver. Mm. Because if there's a time you actually understand, every barrier people expect you to attend every barrier people expect you to pay their maternity bills people expect you to feed them to take their kids to school so ideally you understand the challenges people are going through mm. sometimes people just come to you when they are so sick mm. it's like they could die the next moment if you don't do something literally it's like they could die the next moment mm. you know so there's all that when you're doing mm. like uh, um door to door mm. and then there's competition people wanting yeah. to edge you out mm -hmm. you know but then uh i've always said always try and enjoy the journey mm. imagine always try and enjoy the journey it's an opportunity it's a privilege mm. while at it mm. enjoy, enjoy the it. journey you mm. know mm. so i am so glad i had a very good support system this time around, and yeah. a community mm. were ground mm. like literally by the way mm. for me my support circle showed up and all out mm. you know mm. i had my strategy team mm. you know um i remember receiving a text from someone i met in madaria <laughs> she right? not only sent me once she sent three times in the same day saying you know, vote vote have you voted we'll yes. know if you voted vote, vote and they vote. want proof that you voted <laughs> yeah. right you know 
from Rachel Mwikali, exactly. from uh, Nirima Wako, from yeah. uh, Wilkista Duma, mm. Shiko Kihika, mm. uh, Ken Odede from mm. Shofko, you mm. know, uh, you know, Diana Sifuna, mm. Martha. I mean, there were so many people mm. uh, who really uh, came out. Mm. Uh, also, Mili Mabona, I'm mm. so grateful. Mm. She also um, came out to, you know, to also do a video mm. about how we've interacted mm. and also mobilized for me because I couldn't go yeah. uh, to many areas across the country. So for her even mobilizing in Homa Bay, mm. um, and even mm. just the donor community mm. as well, Cyprian Nyamuamu. I mean, there's so mm. many guys who came out, you know, mm. Winnie Nyandiga. Mm. So many guys really came out, mm. uh, you know, to support my candidate. I can't mm. even remember some of them right now <laughs> because the list is so huge. Even yeah. others got into trouble for supporting me, oh, wow. uh, like Patience Nyange. And that is how, you know, um, you know, ethnicity plays a role in this mm. country because people are just like, if you're from this tribe, you should support me mm. because I'm also from the same tribe. Mm. And for me, I'm always like, just invest in your circle. Be there for people mm. because the next time they're mm. going to be there for you, mm. you know. So I am so grateful. Mm to everyone who came out to support me. Mm. You know, like mm. st like I said, there's so many people who came out to support mm. me mm. Uh, in this particular campaign. I can't even remember some of them right yeah. now. But I'm so grateful that every vote counted. I don't take you it for granted like that we 30, got 34,000 wow. votes. Wow. I don't take it for granted that mm. we got all those number of votes, mm. you know. Mm. I am super grateful that people saw it worthy mm. to actually vote because they believe in what we wanted to do and what we promised to do even after we got this particular uh, seat because I was the first runners up. Mm. Um, and uh, I look forward to journeying, mm. not only uh, with people who supported me, mm. but people across mm. uh, the country mm. who are also part of Miss President. Mm. I look forward to journeying with them mm. because imagine this country will need all of us. Yeah. Like there's no yeah, one person exactly. who has monopoly mm. over ideas mm. in terms of mm. how they're going to lead and solve some of mm. the, the, the challenges that we have. Mm. It will take all of us. Yeah. yeah. You're a true change maker. And um, as you look back, you know, look back over your shoulders, tell the Bina at five years, at six years, what is it that you tell her? Um, I would tell her to do things afraid, mm. you know, that mm. whatever you want to pursue, it might not look conventional, mm. you know, mm. it might not be accepted mm. or validated, mm. but do it afraid. Mm show up for what you believe in. Mm. Sometimes it's that difference mm. that sets you apart. Mm. Sometimes it's that difference that people have been waiting for, mm. right? Because if I didn't st stand up for the strategies we are pursuing right now, even at the organization, I would not have known that it would even impact young women. Mm. I would not have known that you can actually use fashion and beauty mm. to discuss politics mm. because I have not experienced it or I have not seen it mm. until we tested the concept, mm. you know. Mm. And at the time, no one even wanted to invest in it mm. because we were just like, how are we paying a makeup artist to mm. come to your event? How are we paying a salonist? Mm. Even if you convince them that mm. we go to the same saloon, right? Yeah. Yeah. This salonist is able to cut across class, mm. to cut across, uh, you know, uh, tribe, mm. to cut across race. Mm. Why can't this person be the one to set the agenda at the salon level? Mm. This makeup artist has a very huge following, mm. a following that is disconnected in political matters. Yeah. So stand up even if you are alone. Mm. Mm. Stand up for your truth. Right. You know, that's the only way mm. you then start seeing people show up mm. to support you mm. because they've seen your consistency and they've seen your uh, discipline and mm. uh, perseverance, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, I would also tell the younger me that it's important to be faithful mm. in the little that you're given, mm. in the little that you have, you know. Um, again, it just goes back to, you know, at the community level, sometimes, you know, you kind of feel like, Oh, no one is seeing uh, what I'm doing. We don't trend. I am not visible. People are always watching. Mm. Let me tell you, your neighbor is watching you. Mm. Your friends are watching you. Your relatives are watching. I'm telling you, people are always watching. There's always someone who's watching. 
be faithful mm. in the little that you're given mm. you know uh whatever job you're doing be faithful you know um such that by the time you're leaving the impact you've left will mm. be felt long after mm. you've left yeah. long after you've left you yeah. know Mm. So, so that even by the time you're scaling mm. to doing bigger things mm. and to being entrusted as a steward with bigger things, your character has been tested, mm. your patience mm. has been tested, mm. your discipline has mm. been tested, mm. your kindness and your perseverance mm. has been tested. Because as you grow and as you access more power, if there's something that power will test, is your character. Mm. I'm telling you, if you look at the leaders who've fallen, you know, from uh, grace, mm. you know, if you look at the leaders, for majority of them, it had nothing to do with their inability to deliver, or mm. maybe they were not educated mm. enough, or they didn't possess enough skills. Mm. It had something to do with their character. Yeah. It had something to do with their integrity. Mm. For majority of them, it had something to do with their character and integrity. Mm. Because mm. your skills will open doors for you, mm. Your knowledge will open doors for you, but, but it will character. take character and integrity keep to keep those doors open. That's true. You know? That's true. And I think um, lastly, it would be asking for help is not a sign of weakness. Mm. Acknowledge that you don't know everything, yeah. that you're a student of life. Mm. You know, you, no one has monopoly over all the knowledge out here. Mm. So don't look at it in terms of if I ask for help, they'll be like, I. Of mm. all the people, mm. so and so is asking me for help. Mm. No, you don't know everything. Yeah. And it's okay to not know everything, mm. you know. Mm. And it's not a sign of weakness when you ask for help. Exactly. There are mentors who, when you reach out to, they'll help you escape some common pitfalls, mm. you know, that will take time mm. if you're actually journeying alone. Mm. Mm. Seek help. Like, people are always ready to support out Absolutely. here. Yeah, and, you know, like, people are always, like, with mm. open arms, mm. Mm. ready to hear you out, mm. ready to support you, ready to give back, mm. you know. So don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, within, even within your own family, you mm. know, don't be afraid, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so that's you looking back, looking forward, looking ahead. What do you see for Bina? Uh, what do I see for Bina looking? <clears throat> that's a trick question. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so looking forward I see looking forward I see growth mm. um, I see impact yeah. in the areas we've been working in because mm. also change takes time mm. and especially if your work is in a behavior change mm. it really uh, takes time mm. for you to observe the changes mm. right so i'm glad that uh with time you're able to to see that mm. so i see the impact of the work that we are doing mm. in the informal settlements mm. and uh growth in terms of uh, for me also at a personal level mm. mainstreaming uh this uh gender issues in the political processes in this country mm. holding institutions accountable when it comes to better public service uh, mm. delivery mm. but I also see growth in uh, my personal life you mm. know at mm. the family level mm. understanding that um, it's also important to invest in other areas of my life that mm. life cannot just be uh, one dimensional mm. you know like it's not just one dimension mm. you know mm. so investing in the people around me mm. you know in my mm. family mm. in my child you mm. know mm. um in my siblings mm. you know so mm. just how old is your child growing them my child is three and he's mm. so handsome mm. you know he's three years old mm. and um he motivates me every other day mm. in terms of the work that i do and mm. i'm always curious about uh, whether I'm actually doing enough mm. to create a more kinder and better well, environment that mm. uh, he's going to um, grow up in, mm. you know, like uh, literally, mm. you know. Mm. So I always look at him and I'm like, you know what, um, I hope I'm doing something mm. towards um, a better country for you, mm. you know, because mm. this is your home. Yeah. This is your home. Mm. No matter where you travel to, mm. it's um, always going to be uh, your home. Mm. 
and I think also investing in uh, my circle of friends. Mm. Um, so I realize as we grow older, our circles thin out. Can mm. you imagine? It you know, true. like our circles just thin out, and I'm just like, oh my god, when when was the last time I saw so and so and mm. so and so and mm. so and so? Mm. So. Nowadays, I'm so intentional. I'm just like, imagine me, I'm going to love you whether you love me or not. <laughs> me, I'm going to be there for you whether you want to be there for me or not. Mm. When you're hurting, me, I'm just going to come and stay mm. here with you, mm. by the way. You mm. know, mm. just being intentional in terms of um, in uh, investing in my friends and even understanding we don't have to miss each other at the same time. Mm. Imagine. <laughs> I don't have to miss you for you and then for you to miss me, for us to meet. Mm. See me, I've missed you. Mm. Me, I'm going to come and see you. Mm. You know, me, I'm going to call you. Mm. Tomorrow you'll also miss me when I don't miss you. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. So just being so intentional. That's clever. You mm. know, with mm. uh, with mm. um, with my friends mm. and investing in my mm. uh, in my circle. And mm. I'm really optimistic mm. because I meet young people with bold ideas. Mm. With bold ideas. Mm. Uh, and uh, people who are not letting their past define them. And right. I see myself in mm. them. Mm. And they give me so much hope, mm. you know, that tomorrow is better mm. because this person is not giving up. Mm. Tomorrow mm. is better because this person is consistent in mm. what they're doing. Mm. Tomorrow is better because this person is embracing integrity mm. in, her, in their dealings, yeah. even when it's in leadership. And they're changing how we even look at political leadership, mm. socially, uh, how we engage, uh, and even how we look at entrepreneurship and just every aspect in our mm. society. Mm. So people give me hope every day, and I'm so positive about our future. I, I have enjoyed listening to you, and I can tell that you're paying it forward a lot and you are doing it very deliberately, also acknowledging where you've come from. I thank you for, again, honoring our invitation, for spending a significant chunk of your day when, you know, um, proposals would be flying <laughs> off or, or reports would be getting cleared just to, um, you know, share your story, share your experience, share your journey. Um, in development, in politics, in family, in, in the whole of this life. And yours is very, um, it's a story that I believe will highly motivate, but also mm -hmm. amplifies some of the really good work that you've been doing. So from my end and from the entire team at Didi with Maxi, I just want to thank you, but also mm -hmm. give you the opportunity okay. to close it with any closing remarks. Um, I think I want to say thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I have been so inspired by some of the stories that I've listened to, some of them from actually uh, people I know. And uh, thank you for this platform because half the time we don't even sit with ourselves to reflect on our journey because things are moving so fast. So you don't even sit down to reflect. And I think that is why uh, some moments were quite emotional for me because, you know, like things are on, like I'm on the go, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, thank you so much for uh, this platform. And I pray that it, it keeps on growing and growing. And I also want to thank your team uh, that is also supporting you uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, this is actually a success because it actually is huge. And uh, to anyone also listening to this, I'd love to say that, uh, or that repeat what I said uh, in terms of the most important office in this country is uh, not the office of the president, is not the office of the governor, the MP, the member of county assembly or the women rep. The most important office is the office of the citizen. Mm. And if all of us occupied our offices as citizens mm. effectively, mm. if you cared about another person, if you knew that another person's insecurity threatens your own, another person's hunger threatens your own, uh, ability to have food tomorrow if we cared enough to step up and speak up and even loan people our voices when they can't even use their own voice and hold space for people mm. i think we would achieve the progress we are aiming at much much faster mm. Mm. Yeah. thank you